Hi guys! We just wanted to read this book too that we found at the library because it's very inspiring and I found that it helped me and my daughter to feel more empathy than we already feel as well as compassion for all living things. So this book I highly recommend. I would give it 5 out of 5 stars. I would give it 10 out of 10 hearts and I would give it 100 out of 100 smiley faces. So this is called That's Why We Don't Eat Animals. And that's why we don't eat animals. A book about vegans, vegetarians, and... All living things. Written and illustrated by Ruby Ross. So here we go. Let's crack her open. A flower will push through a crack in the sidewalk in order to feel the sun. A penguin will march thousands of miles to find food for her babies. The thunderous roar of a lion protects his family from danger near and far. Whether it has gills, wings, whiskers, or roots, every living being shares the will to live and grow. We are all earthlings. While some animals are protected by laws or born into loving homes, Others live painful and lonely lives on factory farms where hundreds or thousands of animals are raised for meat and dairy. But they too live and breathe. They too have feelings and families. People throughout history have chosen not to eat these fellow earthlings. Vegetarians are people who don't eat animals. Vegans are people who don't eat animals or anything that comes from an animal, like eggs, milk, or butter. We strive for a world where every earthling has the right to live and grow. That's why we don't eat animals. Pets. Pets are a member of our family. They nuzzle us to, and we play together. We pets, we pet them and we both feel calm. Their love is so powerful that it can even help us heal. It can even help us heal. We can tell when we feel lonely, just as we can tell when they want dinner. We know each other by heart. All animals deserve the care and protection we give at our pets. Animal families. Just like we do, many baby animals stay close to their parents long after they're born. Our families warm, protect, and comfort us, preparing us for the great big world. On factory farms, there are no animal families with no mama in sight. These babies live without a sense of family or safety. Animals belong in families, packs, herds, and flocks. chickens. A hen lays an egg that will come one day be one day be her baby in a carefully planned nest. She and her chicks cool to each other before the eggs even hatch. Roosters keep watch and older chicks play chase, tag, and hide and seek. Crammed into a cage on a factory farm, farms chickens have no room to live. There's no land to explore, no dust to bathe, no dirt to peck, poke, or scratch. There's barely space to spread their wings. Ah. Turkeys. Gobble, 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 gobble. When a turkey dances, jumps, gobbles, and flaps its wings, others join in celebration. Turkeys also mourn together, sharing each other's sadness. They're so sensitive that they even blush. Their snoods change colors depending on their mood. When the moon rises, wild turkeys fly to the treetops to roost for the night, gathering together beneath each other's wings. 
A factory farm turkey will never get to use her wings at all. Turkeys raised for meat are fattened until they become too heavy to fly. Quail. No bigger than bumblebees, newborn quails start walking as soon as they pop out of their eggs. Quails are free parents who will do anything to protect their babies, but they can't protect them from hunters. On many, many farms, quails are raised just for gaming, which means they, they are hunted for fun. Is that fair to a family of quail? Ducks and geese. Every winter, ducks and geese journey across the earth to lands where their babies will be warm. They fly through the skies for days and months, crossing over states and even entire countries. But factory farm ducks and geese are caged behind bars and force fed to make them fat. The skies above them are endless but these birds will never fly. Birds raised for meat, called poultry, are just like the birds we see outside our windows, but they don't receive the same love and protection that free birds do. Crowded together, they can't follow their instincts, so they grow sick and scared. Soon they begin to lose their feathers. Birds are meant to use their wings to fly, their beaks to feed, and their feathers to flock together. Pigs. It should be a complete compliment to be called a pig. Pigs are some of the smartest, cleanest, and most sensitive animals on planet Earth. Free pigs live with their families and friends. Snorting and whistling, they recognize each other's voices from far, far away. They're, they, they're, they root for food, recognize and play ball in the sun, but they don't sweat like we do. To keep cool, cool when they play, they take a mud bath to cool uh, of in in yeah, I can't say it. Um, instead. instead, a muddy pig is a wise pig. <laughs> yeah, pigs are cool. A factory farm pig may spend her whole life alone, fattened in a pen, so tiny she won't even be able to turn around. A free pig will never, a free pig never poops where she, she eats or sleeps, but on a factory she has no choice. Creepy. But with a, with a she. Pigs need the s sight, sound, of t and touch of one another. Sometimes they snuggle so close that it's hard to get them apart. Love is part of their nature. Cows. Ooh. Cows have many moods. They are curious and funny. They even hold grudges. Proud cows show off. Best friends take walks together. And calves play follow the leader. Herds behave like big families, staying close to each other and even mooing together until a wandering cow finds her way back home. On factory farms, cows are unable to be with their families, stretch, or chew fresh grass under the sun. They're fed corn, which fattens them and gives them stomach aches and gas. Cattle, farm waste product, cattle farms waste precious water and make pollution that leaks into the ocean and sky. Growing vegetables instead of raising animals could save our planet's oceans, air, and sea life. And the food and water we'd save could feed more hungry people all over the world.
the ocean. Beyond our shores exists another world, an underwater kingdom, ruled by the Antarctic and majestic beings. Wise blue whales circle the depths of the Earth's ocean. The gigantic hearts of each other, the small size of a car boom as they guide through the waters. Giant turtles are the great protectors of the ocean sea grass beds. They keep them healthy for all sea life. Dolphins are brilliant creatures. One of the smartest specialists on species, I mean, <laughs> on earth. They speak to each other in a language of clicks and chatter. <sighs> Although humans live on land, the food where we eat and and the ways we make effort the ocean and everything in it. Fish have extraordinary senses. They have quick instincts and delicate nerves. Their bodies can feel nearby fish, food, and objects without even touching them. Fish are part of the ocean's ecosystem, a giant family of plants and animals. Each group needs the others to keep the whole family alive and healthy. Every year, fishing nets tangle and crush billions of fish and thousands of sea turtles, whales, and dolphins, and shake that and sharks that are part of the ecosystem. Earth's oceans and rivers are truly being emptied of fish and sea mammals. Can you imagine an ocean with no fish? I really like this fish. Yeah, its lips are really big. <laughs> Pucker up. The rainforest, home to some of our world's most maleficent plants, animals, foods, and medicines. The rainforest is the most powerful and valuable nature resource on Earth. Forests, keep, forests help keep the air clean, the Earth from getting too warm, the Amazon rainforest, one of the world's lar largest, has been called the lungs of the planet. Endangered species. Today, ancient forests, once lush and wild, are slashed and burned down to make room for cattle farms. The fires create pollution and leave animals with no food or shelter. Plants, animals, foods, and medicines are wiped out forever. Page is breaking. It's not going properly. Plants and animals around the world are in danger of being lost. Many are already gone. As earthlings, we depend on each other. We may think we are separate, but we are all woven into the same web of life. When we destroy the rainforest and the animals there, we are destroying ourselves. We must consider how the foods we eat affect the planet. In many cultures around the world, there is a saying that tells us, you are what you eat. When you eat natural food, we soak up the goodness of the sun, the earth, the root, roots, and the trees. We grow to be healthier and pay more attention to our choices. While the power of nature can move most mountains and make rainbows, the power we 
The power we have as humans, as bundles, boundless to every day. We have the freedom to change our lives. In fact, when we treat animals respectfully, practice world and peace. That's why we don't eat animals. What else can we do? Read books on animal veganness, vegetarianness, and raw foods. Discover new veg I don't know, <laughs> vegetarians and vegan foods. Write a school report on veganness and vegetarianness. And look up raw and vegan and vegan recipes and products on the internet with your parents. Buy clothes, shoes, belts, and bags that are not made from fur, leather, or other animal skins. Look for foods that are grown sustainably. Sustainably, that means that the crops are grown in a way that nurtures the earth, animals, and environment instead of depleting them or depleting them. Look for products and foods that are labeled with a cruelty-free logos, like this one. Celebrate Thanksgiving with a vegan feast. <laughs> if you want a pet, adopt them from the pound instead of buying um, from a store or breeder. Keep them healthy and make sure to spray and or neuter your pets. Avoid avoid unwanted animals. Feed your pet vegetarian pet food. Join an organism. That helps the earth, animals, and the environment Reci recycle and reuse. And here's a picture of Ruby Roth. She's an artist and illustrator living in Los Angeles, California, a vegan since 2003. She first discovered children's interest in vegetarianism and veganism while teaching art in an after school program. So thank you, Ruby, for your book. It's delightful to have it in our house, and we recommend it to families and students, teachers, and pet owners out there. I think my favorite part, hmm, I don't know, what do you think your favorite part was, Ezra? I really like the rainforest. Yeah, the rainforest is beautiful. Why don't we get one more little picture of the rainforest? This one? That's the endangered species. The endangered species? Yeah. I think it's... That's another one. The art is incredible in this book. Yeah, I really like it. Do you remember where it is? Do you think it's yeah. before here? Ooh. Yeah, that one's pretty. Some beautiful birds. There we go. It's a hippo or a rhino. Mm. Is that like a tree frog or something? I don't know. My hench frog, let's say that. It would be really fun to paint some pictures that, you know, honor her nature. So thank you, and Goodbye. Um, this has been yeah. Ezra and Naomi with We Don't Eat Animals. That's why we don't eat animals. <laughs>